You are now listening to Wild Talk. Wild Talk is the only podcast that's centered around the LA Wildcats of the XFL and all Los Angeles sports. Produced by Alex Calderon. With your hosts, Chris Rico and Gabriel Montoya. You are now engaged in Wild Talk. Boys, get talking. And you are now listening to Wild Talk. How you doing? It's Alex. Producer Alex is back with uh, Chris Rico. What's good, y'all? And Gabe Montoya. I'm so tired and spent. <laughs> Seriously, me too. And give me some Mo back for another week. It's Mo Jones. Damn. What's back for, up? He said, back, give me some Back mo. again, dude. What's up? And he's wearing a purple rain shirt. I know. Mm, I like that. Fucking awesome. And he put on gloves earlier. I was like, I thought he's got Michael Jackson in with the Prince shirt. He's just showing us up, dude. Hey, where's the Wild Talk shirt? (laughs) Oh, I got mine on. Boom, buddy. Did you give it away? Three amigos. I I took a boo-boo when I went to my house. I didn't want to stink it up. Oh, Oh, man. I thought it was chafing your nipples or something. (laughs) You know how you get a new shirt? You get a new cotton shirt. Mario's (laughs) nipples. Did you... (laughs) Did you, uh, did, Yo, you sell it? did you sell it to one of the I guys? I thought he was just pointing at me. No, <laughs> was his nipples? He, you didn't see his nipples? <laughs> I did. It was we fun. have in studio. We have, we have in two studio, homies hanging in out. Studio guests. Yes. Do you want to present them? Uh, no. Okay. Mario. Welcome. Mario and Chuy. No, we got we got we got from uh, LA Riot Squad. Mario. Mario. Uh, friend of the podcast. Second time in the studio. Yep. And we got a uh, Jesus Chavez. Moises. <laughs> Moises. Chewy. Chewy from uh, News Across the Galaxy. Hey. Yes. Chavez Media Group. I figure, you know, we're at the diggity. Why not, you know, collab? Yeah, why not collab with some people? But, uh, uh, yeah, so how was uh, your guys' week? I'm fucking tired, dude. I'm running, like, no sleep. I went. I work, I, and you still dude, went surfing this morning. I still went oh, surfing yeah. this morning. Dude, the only reason I went is because uh, there's, like, this group of dudes I met that surf every weekend. Uh-huh. Oh, you have another Any, group of dudes you hang out with now? Yeah, exactly. Oh. <laughs> so you hang, yeah, no. Well, well, I mean, you don't you hang don't out either. with me anyways, but yeah. <laughs> so you get together with a bunch of dudes and you hang out in Speedos. Okay. I'm not going to judge. No, in tight wetsuits. Yeah, and you sit on longboards. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> fucking tired, dude. A big wood? My body's like big wood. I know I'm not going to go to work on Monday. <laughs> uh, you calling it now? Dude, I'm calling it now. Uh, I'm going to get sick. Hey, uh, I'm going to be sick on Monday, boss. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm actually going to go see my boss today. Oh, that's right. What about, what about oh, oh I'm, oh, yeah. I'm, I got to explain <laughs> the story. Right? Where, where are you going? Bow, so I have to go to Los Feliz to an ex coworker's house who's actually an enemy of the company I work with, right? An enemy. Yeah. Because my boss, we're all friends, right? My boss is, I, I don't know if it's the guy she's dating or past love interest or whatever. He came on a dating show. Okay. It's airing tonight. Was it uh, that one that used to come on really late night? Blind Date? No, no. It's it called Flirty Dancing. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> or remember what, Next? Remember what, Next on what MTV? What channel was this? Uh, Fox. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so we're we're going to go hate on the show. We're just supposed to go talk a bunch oh, of shit. Oh, you have a oh, party. Oh, that's yeah, nice. viewing party. Yeah. So. How about you, Gabe? What you do this week? Uh, this week I chopped down a couple of trees in my backyard. I repurposed Damn. like a thousand pounds of rocks and stones and beautified it all around my house. Bro, uh, is that why you look shredded? That's why I look shredded. Did you do any flirty dancing? I did not do any flirty oh, okay. dancing. <laughs> well, in the I bathroom, mean. but that doesn't count. <laughs> uh, yeah, my car kicked the bucket, which you guys already know. But oh, I was gonna say, what happened? Do you, so, the, do you have the Audi this week? No, I don't have it's <laughs> it's done. It's done. Like originally I needed a new transmission and now they're with like the, you need a new Toyota? engine. What? The Toyota or the Audi? No, I borrowed that car. You borrowed the Toyota? No, that's my other car. Okay. Oh, I'm, but okay. I borrowed a Toyota truck today. Ah. Okay. Then what car kicked the bucket? The Audi. Remember oh, I oh, said yeah, I was gonna yeah, buy yeah, another yeah, Audi, yeah, maybe? Yeah. Much. Sorry, you have so many cars. <laughs> it's hard to rich up. people problems, dude. Yeah, man. Yeah. You know what? I mean, what's Manhattan kicking a bucket Beach, for a rich person? Yeah. Like Manhattan Beach. All right, <laughs> gotta speak speak the what's kicking a bucket, language dude? With the locals. You got a flat tire? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a scratch on it, so I got to buy a new car. Um, no, so I did that. I've been watching uh, watching sports all week. Um, I got to see uh, Liverpool once again. Yes. Whatever, shut up. So yes, on, pool Beer boys. Team. So stupid. No, it's not stupid. What about you, Mo? What you do this week? <sighs> I had a hard week this week. Um, <laughs> I, I really did. I got my car out of the shop on uh, Monday, 
and then Monday night, somebody came along and got a saw and cut off my catalytic converter. What? And, yes. Yo, man, you've had a rough week, man. Uh, where bad. do you live? <laughs> I live in Long North Beach. Long Beach, right? Yeah. They cut they cut that out, and apparently, what it's all heck? about the platinum that's inside of this. Because uh, from what I the research that I've done, um, apparently, um, Toyota they 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 give quality parts to their cars. So inside of their metal, they apparently put platinum. And I, I know you guys care about the metal markets, and apparently... We all drive Toyotas, too. Okay, <laughs> dope. So be on the lookout, because your converter could be in danger. Because uh, uh, platinum metal apparently is, is skyrocketing right now. Okay, so nice. they're taking these converters and cracking them just to get that, uh, that, platinum. that platinum out. And apparently, they can melt it down, they take it to a metal shop, and they just sell it for no shit. cash, man. They're yeah. treating it like vibranium. If somebody ever the did my, yeah, if somebody ever did that to me. They melted down and made Captain America shield. <laughs> That's a titanium. And, and <laughs> vibranium, sorry, vibranium. Yeah, vibranium. The scary thing is, is it's the Priuses and the Tacomas. And from what oh, I I'm understand, cool, it well, it's all all of the Toyota parts. Yo, you're uh, literally putting this on blast, dude. <laughs> <laughs> we got some ghetto ass listeners. <laughs> yeah. Well We yeah, met them. Uh, we uh, met them. Appara- <laughs> apparently they can saw those converters off at about you know, about 30 seconds and they just go up and down the blocks and they, they take these things. I off. would go full like man on fire. If somebody ever took my ah, converter, man on fire. Good movie. Yeah. You, yeah. you they cut full that thing Denzel. off my Prius and it made it sound like a Harley Davis in motorcycles. You never so. go full retard. Uh-oh. Never. Never. <laughs> so, I mean, that's never. just, that was just the start of it. And then oh, shit, I had to watch more. that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> then I had to watch the Celtics destroy my Lakers. Oh, they oh, fucking that was burnt them. And, and and you know, as a Laker fan, I I can Mario. I can handle losing <laughs> to anybody. I cannot handle losing to the Celtics. Not like that. In that fashion, too. Uh huh. And I got trapped in a garage. Man, what? this man has had a week, bro. <laughs> it's been a Yo, hard week. And man. you complain over here about your Audi dying. Okay. He got a scratch. <laughs> what the hell, man? It's an Audi. <laughs> he got to get you washed the first time. <laughs> it's like, I can't. I can't drive this car again. Nah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I got trapped in the garage because of the door. Your the, own garage. Yeah. The spring above the, the, the lifter broke. Then how'd you get it, out? It took like two other people to come and help me, but I had to wait McGruber. for people to come home. So I was trapped for like 30 minutes in my own garage. I couldn't lift it. Damn, man. Yeah. Did you have your phone on you? Yeah. Oh, you cool then, man. <laughs> but I had to call people to come and tell them to come and help me. Yeah. So no it's way. not it's not fun when you especially you're I can sit leave. there for thirty minutes and kill time. Uh, yeah. Easily. Yeah. I do it at work, dude. All right. <laughs> for like a, eight hours. <laughs> there's a difference when you, you do, do it on this on the podcast. Clock. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and do it paid. in life. <laughs> there's nothing like sitting in a garage full of like, you know, gasoline on the ground for fun, you know. It's wow. No fun. But I yeah. like to smell gasoline. Man, I'm glad the week is almost <laughs> over then for you. <laughs> so uh Alex, what'd you do? Worked. Oof. Good answer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. My week is not as uh as eventful as you guys. Okay. You didn't yeah, get trapped right. in the garage? Uh, no, I did not. You didn't have to get a fresh fade. Did you go see Chicharito no, at the airport? No, I did not. Oh. You didn't go see Chicharito? No, I was working. We were all there. I know. I was gonna Wait, go. Wait, you went? No. I oh. was going to go, and then I was working. <laughs> in spirit. I was working. Uh, kind of glad I didn't go after the fiasco, but... Sam went. I saw, I it. I saw it on Instagram. Yeah, but I was working. Wait, I Did just, you guys go? No? no he's, not, he's not a fan of Chicharito. He was working. Oh. Uh, like we were working together. Wait, dude, should we just... That's part of the LA news? Uh, no. Oh, here goes LeBron. Hey! But, Lakers uh, within 10. The first thing I want to talk about was... Something near and dear to my heart. One of my favorite players is back. Ooh. Oh man, oh. the beast, Sean Oakman. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but you really got excited when you saw him. Yeah, you had to sit down. You were standing yeah. up. Then you said he's back, and you had to sit down. What and then I was about? like, "Hey, Alex, can you go grab this for me?" And you're like, "I can't stand up. Give me a second. Was it the pleats? <laughs> well, was it a, the pleats? Was the it an is, illusion? There's only like, like three players, four players I was really excited about, and they three of them hard. are gone. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Uh, this is it. This is all I got. Man, no, but I'm excited. He's back. I mean, uh, I think he's gonna make our defense better. Oh, I showed uh, these guys better. his his Baylor picture. Remember, I showed you guys yeah. his picture of Baylor with his. Yes. He's yoked out. He's yoked out. Uh, uh, we actually uh, um, got to talk to him a little bit today. And you want to call it that? That dude was mean. Yeah, he just scared the sh- crap out of me. Which is good for uh, <laughs> which is good for us. Yeah, it's good for us. Bad for the opponents. Bad for the opponents. But it goes to tell something. Obviously, we talked about it earlier in the season. Uh, we didn't think it was a football move. The, the reason he was released. So 
something must have gone right. And he's back in the fold. He even said it like during the interview, right? He, he even said, uh, I had to do whatever I had to do to get back on the roster. And so that tells me he did whatever he had to do. And then coach Moss, the way he described it as he went into exile, he didn't say like, you know, he was cut forever, but maybe he had some personal business to take care of. Maybe, maybe he just, like I said, maybe he just messed up with curfew team rules and stuff like that. And he had to do whatever he had to do to get back. He was walking around like a rock star. With his little hat, he was, was badass. With his Pharrell yeah, hat, just being all massive. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine being that big and just walking around the crowd like, "Yep, I could kill everybody in here with my bare hands." He went to go shake my hand, and his fingers reached my elbow. <laughs> <laughs> you do got those man hands too, man. <laughs> I was like, "Oh." He's like, you got soft hands. Huh. <laughs> Boy, you got them soft hands. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of lotion do you use? <laughs> what kind of lotion do you use? Uh, I have this Bath and Body Works lotion. It's called <laughs> <You> Midnight. <laughs> oh, shit. And, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> oh, maybe that's why he, <laughs> he liked it. <laughs> Brother Darkness. <laughs> well, when it comes to this player particularly, I'm looking at the... Um, one of the, the press statements that the uh, Wildcats released right me, right after they let him go. And it yeah. said, the Wildcats are all about supporting each other and winning the championship. We made a collective and joint decision that it was best that to move on. So, I mean, I think it was some kind of character issue. He, he, You're a lot smarter than us. We, <laughs> wait, we didn't get that. You <laughs> read? <laughs> I didn't know you read. <laughs> no, I don't. Yo, we I, did, but I we didn't put really that together. Good. We read no. that and did not put that together. I did not know we had a scholar amongst us. I mean, <laughs> he's going to law school. I mean, I take it from the from that one word. We're about supporting supporting each other. Right. So it, it sounds like it had to be some kind of character flaw because it, yeah, I, it sounds like he wasn't being a team player because they let him back. Yo, he is a scary motherfucker, dude. He look. You know. You know what I was. Like, thinking I thought about? at one point he was just gonna. Just deck one of them. <laughs> nah, he's great. He seemed like a nice guy. <laughs> no, he was a really nice guy. He's a nice guy. He's a big guy. I was looking at his hat on the table. I kept thinking about The Undertaker. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. that'd be a good nickname for him. Exactly. I'm like, man, that's a big dude, man. The Undertaker. I got to write that down. I like yeah, that. The Undertaker. But yeah, yeah I'm excited. Super to, cool dude, though. Super I'm excited cool. to have him back. Uh, oh, let's go. Excited to have him back. And uh, another piece of uh, XFL news, uh, the XFL hires... Uh, Bart Andrus to coach Team Nine, so we heard rumors about this Team oh, Nine. Oh right? yeah, 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 yeah. So this is basically a team that's gonna be co- that's gonna go through practice like they were normal team, playing and ready to play. And in case there's injuries or anything, you pick you get a player from Team Nine to fill that role. Really, that's what yeah. it is. That's yeah. crazy. I actually thought they're making it a Team Nine, uh, well, like a nine team. It could be, but for this season, oh. they're gonna they're gonna have a team ready. Like they're gonna go through practice. They're gonna they're gonna be based out of Dallas. Caruso. Uh, they're gonna go through practices like a normal team, and then, and there's if there's injuries, and you had to pick somebody up. It's gonna come from Team Nine. Oh, nice. And uh, I, so I, it's only those players. You can't just pick up somebody from the streets. Uh, you probably could, but you could. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I have a little bit of exclusive. Last night, about I think like three in the morning, Jeremiah Spicer messaged us saying that he's eligible for Team Nine. He oh. messaged us. Yeah. He messaged us. Yes, he messaged us. Oh, nice. I like this. Not you, us. Us. He messaged the Twitter. He, he DM'd the Twitter account that he's eligible for Team Nine. I like that. I like that. So all you Jeremiah Spicer fans out there, he's uh he still got a shot. Okay. Yo, it's funny. I was as I was listening my to the the podcast I did. I didn't say Jeremiah Spicer. I said Jeremiah Spencer. Yeah, and I heard that. Oh, Jeremiah Spencer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, uh, shout outs to 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 Believe LA Football Podcast. Chris Rico was on as a guest. Yes, I was. How did that go? It, went it was good, low. man. It was good. Did you feel out of place? I no, no. He, did, up. he did cuss a lot. Well, he gave me the green light. Oh yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. He went like a whole like three minutes without dropping an f bomb, and then he said something. He goes, "Oh my bad, I'm sorry. Can I cuss?" And he goes, "Yeah." And then it was just all <laughs> f bombs out there. <laughs> what you have it to literally tell- it, it made him cringe. It was like, "Fuck." What do you have to tell Rico is try not to. To at least keep it respectable to like six to ten f bombs of show. No, it, he is a he's a really smart guy. I've listened to his podcast since. You know? Oh, okay. He's no, really no, good. Really good podcast, man. He's a and really yeah, good. Podcast. What's the podcast called again? Believe L A Football. And yeah, he just talks about L A Football. And he has good. He has good guests. Yeah, they cover the Chargers. Really they good cover guests. the Rams. They cover UCLA, USC, and now the Wildcats. Yeah, USC, UCLA, 
Chargers, hey, Rams. Hey, can I take it back to Sean Oakman for one second? Go ahead. Uh, the Wildcats, since I was talking about the tweets that they put out. Are you still reading? Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> I, I'm faking it, though. Um, they put out a tweet of, of that, that picture you sent us about his abs, and it says, uh, uh, we can confirm that he's still a massive human. <laughs> <laughs> I don't tell me where's the lie. I feel bad for the offensive tackle that has to go against him. Well, the last piece of XFL news: uh, the Seattle Dragons signed Garrett Hartley, a Super Bowl champion, the guy who kicked for the uh, Saints when they won the Super Bowl. Um, he's back from five wait years. when the Saints won the Super Bowl. Yeah, five, like he, he retired five years ago. Now he's back, bro. How long ago did they win the Super Bowl? Uh, a while back, like ten, over ten years ago, right? Yeah, yeah. but he's a kicker, man. Yeah, like two thousand six, he said a kicker, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's well, how old is his kicker, man? He's 33. <laughs> I mean, 33. Not too old. I mean, Logan's just oh, can still kick. Little. And you know who will not be kicking in the XFL? Who? Chad Ochocinco. Some young ho. So I, I think he uh, no showed his practice. His, his, after asking for a tryout on Twitter that he wanted to be a kicker, he no showed the. You know his, who did show up, though? Who? PFT from uh, Part of My Take. Some young ho. <laughs> he did. That's yeah, right. Yeah, he for did. For the defenders, right? Yeah, for the defenders. Man. Yeah. That's, that's good. He did show up. But uh, I don't know what's up with Chad. Uh, why would he ask for the tryout and not do it? It just seems Probably like... Oh, okay, like okay, let, me, let, me, let me let you guys know a secret. Uh-oh. Oh. That brother is crazy. Yeah. Ocho Cinco is insane, mm-hmm. in case y'all didn't know. I like mean, Antonio he, Brown insane? Yeah, well, he from, did, he did bet on Connor, so not to that level. Give him. If Connor and Chad Ocho Cinco got in a fight, who would win? Connor who? Connor McGregor. Who do you think would win? A trained professional fighter or some dude who's big? True. Obviously, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, he's a huge soccer fan, by the way. Yeah, yeah. he is, and FIFA player. He, yep. I mean, he plays. Obviously, FIFA he's a Liverpool fan because he, he likes plays winners. against the Godfather. <laughs> yeah, he does. So LeBron just broke a uh, uh, past Kobe on the uh, all-time scoring list. That's yeah. dope. Yeah, Kobe cool. just tweeted. Uh, That's three Lakers that are on the top, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. I, I like I like the the fact that it can be classy about this whole thing and not you know fight about it and who's better and you know because it's a different time man I mean yep I think Zion's the next one I think it's dope that it's gonna be one two three later <laughs> I, I don't see know. see I'm I know not, it's gonna get you dude with Zion? yo yeah. I, I need to I'm know this man I'm sorry he literally is the next one up dude yeah. why do you I'm hate not. Zion yeah I don't hate Zion I just don't think he's the truth. Oh, 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 why, why not? Like why, why not? Like my boy. Like let, let him do something first. Cause, cause he, he, wait, he will. Wait. He will. Because the thing that gets me is I spoke to this same guy and he was talking about uh, what's his name from the Clippers? I can't think of his the, the light skinned dude. The, the that's now on the uh, Detroit Pistons. Oh, uh, Blake Griffin. <laughs> exactly. I said back then I'm like Blake Griffin. All he can do is dunk and jump over Kias. And they're like, Nah, man, this guy is the truth. He's for reals. And I'm like, Nah, I, I never called him the truth. No, no, I didn't say you oh. personally but you did like blake griffin i know you did wait this is news to I me i have a soft spot for light skin dudes you know that <laughs> this is news to me this is this is news to me okay uh, it's a card in my back pocket now yeah well i liked him when he was in college before okay. he came with the clippers once he came with the clippers he'd eat a dick mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, i'm mm-hmm. just saying so as far as zion zion was killing it in college in I high school, he exactly, was already a celebrity at 15. Exactly. He yeah. was killing it in college. He came to the NBA. He, in his first game, he hit like three threes. I'm, I'm being honest with you, up. Alex, at the, his level of fame at that age, of, even in high school, there's only been a few players like that, which is obviously LeBron, Kobe, and now Zion, man. Bro, if you want to crown him, crown him, bro. But he is who I thought he is, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know is is it because you don't want to see the Pelicans work out? No. Ooh, good no. question. No, no, no. Because I feel like Laker fans. I'm not I'm not specifically pointing the finger at you, but I feel like Laker fans want that better no, end of the deal. Because you knew last season I was hating. I don't reason Duke. I just hate all Dukies. You know that. I don't oh. like people from Duke. I don't know. That's greatness right there, man. I mean, like like Smallwood said, he wants to be around greatness. No, was it Small? Yeah. No, it was uh, uh Oakman. Oakman. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just not a Duke fan. You know that. Mm. I mean, I'm not the only one. There's a lot of people who don't like Duke out there. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. I'm looking at the the top NBA scorers you, of all time. I yeah. bet you uh, Chris like Christian Leitner, huh? When he came out of college. Look, it's cool. You, you do like mediocre white dudes. Zion has cool. 22. Points. I like I like uh, Caruso. Uh, no, but he's not. <laughs> he's not see, mediocre, see? bro. That fool is a G. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, what are you saying? Yeah, 22 points and four threes. Come on, man. That's he that's literally cool. had like a point. 
every minute. Bro, he's played two games, and you guys are already like I'm, salivating over his him first shit. game I mean, was already historic. And you know why I'm saying that? Because if you go on NBA.com, they're calling it historic. <laughs> <laughs> and he reads, dude. Exactly. He reads. <laughs> they make it really well. Yeah. I mean, bro, so he, it's not, I mean, he looks like the helicopter. We don't fact check, bro. Tape. He looks like the helicopter from the Animal Mixtape team, bro. Now you really hate on him, man. Yeah, that's straight yeah. hate. That's hate. Yeah. Hey, man. I'm, hate. I'm doing some fact checking right now. If you got hate in your heart, you got to out. What's this fact checking? I'm going to tell you why I love Zion. Okay, go for it. He, he, he reminds me of Bismarck Key, his body a little bit, but the way he goes to the hole, what, I mean, the guy, the guy has some... And his name is Zion. Exactly. Holy Mount Zion. I feel like if you're going to be like a legendary player, you have to have a name that nobody has. LeBron. Kobe. Kobe. Zion. 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 Case closed. Yeah, right? <laughs> there was no Jordan before Michael Jordan. That's true. It's, 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 there was Long Beach Jordan. Can I, can I, it wasn't a thing. Can I get one? It of wasn't those? a thing until Michael Jordan came Which out. But, yes. So, yeah, Zion is obviously the next one. The Lakers are going to lose. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I can see that. Man. Yeah. There's a, we, we, one day we've got to talk about their glaring needs, but. Yeah, one day. <laughs> We're going to ignore them until we have to talk about it. <laughs> We're going to ignore them until we lose in the playoffs. Can we get to uh, big news about Chicharito finally being? Wait, did have, we talk have, about that last week? Have we even talked about that yet? No. no. Oh, so I was just going to – I was doing fact-checking real quick as you guys were talking. And uh, I was looking at the top players, the top scorers of all time, right? Because LeBron just passed Kobe. Dude, I'm looking at these players, and first of all, they're awesome, right? All the top scorers in NBA history. I'm like at Larry Bird on number, what number was I? 34. And everyone before that started more than half of their rookie games, except for Kobe. And half of, uh, over half of their second year games, except for Kobe. Which makes so he, sense. He didn't even start starting until his third year. Well, everybody I mean, was hating on. They were hating on Kobe when he first came in. Oh, plus, they still hate on Kobe. And plus, he came to an actually loaded team. So they yeah, were they like, were we good. Don't, we don't need you. Have a seat, young man. Have a seat. They drafted him for the future. But some of these players too, they came onto good teams and they still they started. Yeah, but the thing is, with they Kobe, had Eddie Jones though. Because even Jones wasn't was even like mm-hmm. watching Philadelphia. Simmons was supposed to be that guy mm-hmm. out of college. Remember? Yeah, yeah. he was supposed to yeah. be the truth. But, you know, he's not at the level of Zion. Well, I'm just saying, Kobe played, what, 20 years? Yeah. But he really played 20, 18 21, no? at that percentage of, you know. Well, because he, he started one out because of the injury, right? Yeah. yeah. And then one and a half of the injury, that injury, and still like a whole nother season with another injury in 2004. And then, uh, yeah. So and he didn't play much with the other one. You can probably say he did it in like 10 years. I'm fine with saying <laughs> Kobe like, didn't play a full 20, but if we're like going to discount players like that, does Tim Duncan get a half a ring because he only played a half a season and got a championship? Oh yeah, for the for the lockout season, right? Yeah, I don't. So he's got four and a half rings. I mm-hmm. would I would say that he has five rings, but I would asterisk that now, that now he, now he's a coach. season. Okay, I would. And like if the Lakers would have won it that year, same thing. I would have just you know it's a lockout season, right? But you know it's it, I I don't know I get, I have so much respect for all these players at the top, and I can I can defend some of these players all day, but Kobe, especially because I saw his whole, like a lot of us did, we saw his whole career, you know, and playing in the triangle offense and not being the featured scorer on a team. When you look at all these other players and you're like, damn, Wilt Chamberlain, Moses Malone, Alvin Hayes, Akeem, like Carl Malone, Kareem, they were feet LeBron, like featured scorers on their team right. one through fourth quarter. And people only remember Kobe wearing number 24 being the featured scorer. But when he was number eight, he was not the featured scorer, and when Shaq got in foul trouble or Shaq was struggling or whatever, bro, Kobe would take over. For sure. Oh, come on, Danny. So, uh, yeah, LA, moving on to some L.A. sports news because we're talking about the Lakers. Uh, the Los Angeles Galaxy signed Javier Chicharito Hernandez to a three-year contract. Chicharito! Chicharito! Mexicans These rejoice. These are my stretchy pants. <laughs> <laughs> Mario's not having none of Chicharito, though. Uh, it's okay. He, he will. You Once they start winning championships. Yeah. So Gabe, he you, said four. He said hopefully four. He, was, he said not one, team. not two, not three. And then we call first to nine. Gabe, uh, what do you think? <laughs> what do I think? I think it's a great signing for the team considering where we were at uh, when we got when we didn't re-sign Slatan. I was worried. Um, 
I was worried because n nobody had shown interest in really coming here. None of the stri top strikers had shown big interest in coming here at the time. Sure, there were rumors about Cavani or going after Aguero or Lewandowski or whatever, but those players didn't show any interest in coming here. <coughs> and to be honest, neither did Chicharito when he first started because just last year he said he didn't want to play in the MLS yet. And he just started his contract with Sevilla. So it was a really dire situation, and, and I... I understood why they, they didn't re-sign Slatan. I was okay with it, but I just couldn't understand why people were happy about them not re-signing Slatan. Like, there's no reason to not be happy or to be happy about re not re-signing him. Um, so with that all being said, we're approaching training camp, right? This was a couple weeks ago, and we still don't have a striker. And it's like, damn, like all that potential of oh who we could sign turned in almost turned into wasted potential. So for them to go in like at the eleventh hour. And fig pull this like literally pull it out of their ass and go to fly over to Spain and meet with him and meet with his representatives and work with Sevilla and get it done like in two weeks, man. Like from a marketing perspective, it's a grand slam. From on the field, we'll see. But I think it's like I had said. I think it's like an eight out of ten signing on the field. Eight point so, five. So it's not like a ten out of ten signing like Robbie Keane ended up being. Right or or Beckham ended well even Beckham I would still don't wouldn't count him as an eight out of a, a ten out of ten but Robbie Keane, and then um, there's just it's very hard to hit that so I would say like eight out of ten for him right now and if he wins a couple of championships then it's a ten out of ten signing on the field but off the field it's ten out of ten like you can't get any bigger than that the 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 marketing is like it takes care of itself just by signing him and then it takes care of the whole LA demographic too signing him. So it, it sets up beautifully, beautifully for a traffic go this year yet again. I can't wait. What do you, what, uh, what, what, uh, do you think we need to make any other moves before the season starts? Yeah, I think we need to sign another holding mid. I don't think Corona is going to be able to last the whole year. Last year, he kind of tailed off towards the end of the season. He started off really strong. Him, LeJet, and Jonah were playing really well together in the middle. And then all of a sudden, LeJet had these little nagging injuries. Corona had these little nagging injuries. Jonah was in there trying to hold everything together and they kept switching parts and trying to put them with him. And, you know, he had to adjust to their style. They were adjusting his, to his style. So we, we started to fade a little bit towards the end of the season. So I think another signing at the holding mid, I think you have to relegate Felcher to the bench and you have to feature Araujo as your outside back on the right and bring in Felcher as a depth piece, you know, and then I think you have to sign a really good center back. I think that's still one of the glaring needs is a really good center back. Like Steris is good. Um, uh, Gonzalez was not good last year at all. So hopefully he, he, I mean, he can't play worse. I don't think so. He's going to play better, but you have to sign one more guy and then you have to drop Shelvick because I, I mean, if I see him in a galaxy shirt, I don't know what's going to happen, man. I'm going to lose my shit. So we'll see. Yeah, definitely another, a backup striker, someone serviceable, but it has to be someone domestic. They can't, out the door. they can't, out there. they can't use a, a signing on a international player. Uh, Aaron Johansson's out there. Mm -hmm. uh, if they could pull Aaron Johansson, that, that'd be uh, it's crazy. That'd be crazy if they got him. I mean, Hammerby has him. I mean, uh... or what's his name? Uh, the Asian dude up top for the U.S. national team. Bobby Wood. Bobby Wood. You literally look at me like I knew. <laughs> Bobby Wood won't be a backup. No, 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 and he shouldn't be. He's no. still he's still at a good age. Yeah. But I'm just saying, if you could get a domestic striker with some type of pedigree. Yeah. Agudelo. Well, I like Agudelo. Yeah, well, same style as Chicharito too. Uh, well, not with the finishing, but with the work rate. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, moving on to to actual podcast news, uh, we just uh, left the uh, LA Wildcats block party today. Uh, we were there uh, <laughs> podcasting. Great live. turnout. What kind of party is it, Rico? I don't know. A block yeah, party. Man. Oh my, my bad. My bad. It was a good turnout. God, dude. Yo, man, I'm fucking. Wake up. I'm <laughs> Mo. What kind of party is it? Block party, baby. <laughs> it sounded like you said black party. <laughs> well, if I'm there, it's always gonna be a black party. <laughs> <laughs> we all party in the dark. What kind of block? Trying to talk to this. And blocking these hoes. <laughs> oh man, you know what? <laughs> Speaking, um, of, the, speaking no of the comment. block party we were at, let me ask you a question. It's galaxy related. Because right when I got there today, I sat right under the David Beckham um, statue. And I was like, did he deserve a statue? And as a, as a person who doesn't really watch the galaxy, do you think he deserved that statue here in Los Angeles? Yeah. Uh, he probably he bought, changed, it, he he probably bought it himself. <laughs> he, he almost single-handedly changed the whole league. Absolutely not. And I 100% agree. He doesn't... He, with marketing, with signing, with bringing in big players, big names, big talents, with just the whole thing. If you look at MLS pre-2009, like, dude, 
People were. Uh, it was horrible. The money was bad. Please look at it. Yeah. <laughs> you 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 can pay someone to go back and look at it right now. It was not a good product at all. Some had to come in and save the MLS. They almost folded like in 2005 or something, and they and had the to come the in Galaxy and get kept them alive. The Galaxy owner bought out a bunch of the teams that the owners didn't want in, so he basically bought the teams, uh, just held them until the league got w- was better and it was profitable, and then. Uh, and now they're paying the it back to some crazy yeah. now it's so basically growing, they would have folded if it wasn't for the Galaxy. It's growing wow. good. If you look at like the amount of teams since then to now, the amount of money since then to now, the amount of salary since pre Beckham, post Beckham, like it's not comparable. How much to and on top of that, we have franchise? a new stadium. Like I know it's not the one the team we go for, but <laughs> if if yeah. you if you compare yeah. it to Michael Jordan, like if you look at the numbers pre Michael Jordan, post Michael Jordan, or pre Showtime, post Showtime, it's like probably the same thing. The same thing, like player salaries, uh, new stadiums, new wow. franchises, fan involvement, attendance, like everything went up. All because of Beckham. Yeah. I mean, we interviewed uh, Sean Oak. When we were interviewing Sean Oak, and I told him, hey, man, if you want to come to Galaxy game, uh, hit me up. We'll invite you to a Galaxy game. And he said, shout out to David Beckham. He did give a shout out to him. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. See. So, it, it, you know, the people who are the, the casual fan or the non-fan, they, they, they brought them in. But mm-hmm. I don't think he deserved the first one. And people are like, oh, well, that's what brought in the most fanfare. Okay, so if he would have had, he would have came in third. If he would have got the third statue, you telling me that less people would have shown up? Less it, coverage would have happened? Like, that's bullcrap. Who, who are the other two? If you're saying for the league, who are the two statues? You could give it Landon to Donovan Kobe, Kobe Jones, Jones. Landon Kobe Donovan, Jones. Cienfuegos. <laughs> okay. Okay. Any of those if, guys. If, if, if you're talking about the league, yes. If you're talking about Galaxy specific, no. They could have gave it in order of retirement. Yeah. So, like, which one, which one of those legends retired first? And then you know which one t- retired second would be the next year. So that you could have built up to David Beckham. Everyone would be like, oh, this is the year David Beckham gets a statue. Yeah. And you could have had a whole year of marketing rather than like a month of marketing to get it ready. I know we moved on to the block party, but I just want to ask you guys a question. What do you think of the jerseys for 2020? The Galaxy jerseys. The white ones? Oh, they're, uh, they're growing on me. I give it I like a six out of ten. I give, no, I give, no. I give it like a six out of ten, <laughs> but it's an improvement the, out of the other ones. No, it's better. It's an improvement on on some of the bland ones, I guess you could say, like a slight improvement. But I just feel like MLS jerseys, for the most part, are so basic that mm-hmm. I just don't think I'll yeah, ever be completely too. happy with with they're one. The, one of the right. Out of the center, they're templates. Yeah. They're not original. Right. They're templates from. Uh, yeah. Like the Night Navy one was cool. Like the Night Navy one actually was one of the ones that I'd be like, oh, I'd rock that. Yeah. You know, but the rest are very traditional. But if you look at like even. <laughs> Like Manchester United, Liverpool, like their yeah, their home yeah. jersey is usually a very traditional jersey. They don't go anything crazy. It's their third jersey that they get really creative about. So if the Galaxy can, I know that they do that recycled jersey as their third jersey or yeah. whatever. But if they let them do a third jersey, like and and let them have creative control over what their third jersey is, like get in with Adidas, sit in in a room, each franchise, send representatives and go get designers like they do with shoes, do it with the jersey, bring in a big guy, a big, a big woman, a, a name, someone that everybody recognizes that that does designs and, and digital stuff and then boom, launch that, bro, that sh- the third jersey would... It should go back to the polo shirts. <laughs> I mean, with the collar, yeah. that one, I, wouldn't, I, mean, I mean, there's uh, some throwbacks, some retro jerseys that know, I've seen online. One of the jerseys. best teams in the world, Liverpool, they mm-hmm. still kind of wear them. <laughs> I never heard of him. <laughs> so can we? Uh, so moving on to the block party, you say yes. loser pool. Oh, uh, yeah. So what you guys think of what, Mo? What you think of the the block party? What you think of the turnout? What you think of the event overall? Man, I really dug it. I felt the energy of the XFL. The people were great. The fans seemed really excited. It was a good time. You should have came down. I mean, if it, somebody listening. It went by fast. Yeah, that's how good of a time it yeah, was. Yeah, it went yeah. by pretty quick. It got cold fast. Yeah. It did get cold fast. I, I I liked it. Uh, I thought the people there were genuinely interested in the in the league and the team. Interested uh, in the podcast too. Yeah, we got a lot of questions. I just feel like the the every the casual fan has a lot of questions about it, you know. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what what is this? And even the players, we some of the players we talked to mentioned it. Like it's been an adjustment, understanding that it is or it isn't a legitimate league. So before now yeah. they know it is now with the practices and the preparation and everything. But I think fans still have that question of like, okay, so like, how's this going to be fun? I like, you know, how's it going to be different? Though. He was like, it's just football. Yeah. Okay. We got different rules, but it comes down to it. It's just football. All yeah. right. And it's the football that we love that we grew up on, dude. Did, did I coach my say that? Head hunting. Yeah. Yes. He said that. And also uh, Smallwood was not small. Oh. Uh-huh. Big wood. <laughs> Big wood. 
Speaking Yo, there was that video. There's a video of a, a Guardians running back. Oh yeah, running over yeah. a Vipers Trucking, yeah. uh, outside linebacker. Who? Uh, Guardians running over <laughs> the who? The Vipers. The Vipers. <laughs> and the he Vipers. ran over. He ran over him and he hit him. Stopped. The guy fell down. He runs by him and he dribbles his helmet on the ground. Like he runs by him, bat, dribbles it and takes off for a touchdown. Yeah, there it is. I gotta check this out. <laughs> You gotta yeah. send me that video. Yo, so, I'm, I'm uh, well, right now. Speaking of Coach Moss, uh, we got to interview Coach Moss. Yeah, which everybody was shocked. I know everybody. The whole uh, Wildcats uh, front office was shocked. We were able to get the interview with Coach Moss, um, which we will play for you now. So uh, yeah, here's a uh, here's oh, our okay. interview with Coach Moss. <laughs> Coach Moss coming in. Coach Moss coming in. I don't know how much better of a transition you can get, uh, but we have Coach Moss coming in right now. Uh, another one, a.k.a. Mr. Energy. We just had Mr. Excitement on right now, a.k.a. Meatball. But now we have Mr. Energy, Coach Moss. The Energy. Yeah, no, the, the Energy. source of Energy. I, I know this is your first official time meeting me. I'm Gabe. I'm one of the hosts here on the podcast. Um, we loved your energy up on stage. The players just spoke to us. Some of the players we had here, Bigwood, we had Mr. Excitement come on. We had Heather talk about your energy. Is that something that you hang your hat on? Like, when I go to work today, when I leave, I want people to talk about and remember my energy. Listen, now, how the way I was brought up in high school, I had a great coach in Don Sollinger. We practice hard. They demanded we play hard. I'm a University of Miami guy from Schnellenberger, from Jimmy Johnson. We created that culture down there to where it was compete, confront, or you got left by the wayside. And so uh, the energy and the... Whatever you see on stage is a product of from years and years and years of um, having a foundation of that competitive spirit that was basically drilled in and instilled into me at an early age from my parents uh, to my high school coach to my college coaches. And Miami just brought out a brotherhood and a sense of camaraderie and energy that just took it to another level. Right. And talk about our fan, the, our listeners really want to get to know this team. So talk about the players. I mean, you introduced all of them basically by first name with their nickname on stage, which I was like, holy crap, that's a, that's really something to behold. Um, talk about the players, their energy, their skill set. What you're excited about? You look across this group of young men. What, what is it that you're excited about as their coach? Well, when we after after our draft, um, I wanted to elaborate it on stage a little bit more. Obviously, I couldn't. But when we got to Vegas, yeah, there was an instant camaraderie nice. and a different energy about this team from day one. That our coaching staff and our football ops and all of our people there saying right from the get go, we have something special because. We allowed, we collaborated great from the draft. We brought in competitive, high-spirited, high-character guys. And we got off to a great start because our offensive line, they, they, you saw some of it today, but they, I mean, if they're not laughing, they're mauling somebody. If they're not laughing, joking, <laughs> they're running somebody into the ground. Our defense... You're going to hear so much smack. You're going to hear the University of Miami nice. smack talk yeah. <laughs> that was back in the day. Yeah. Because I called them the Wolf Pack, the Black Ops. They got some other nicknames I we're like going to roll Black with. That's good. We're going to roll with this year. But the guys cross the board from position to position. I cannot speak enough about how they've bought in to the culture that was created in Vegas. It carried over into Houston. We had success in Houston. Anybody they put up put up us put up us against, yeah. we basically took care of business and we're looking forward to taking care of business this year. What's what's the identity of the team that you're trying to instill in this league? When? <laughs> why, 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 do, why do you? I, 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 I told right before I was introduced, I hit the DJ up with win from J Rock. Yeah. Because, the, hey, if, if you're not winning, nobody really cares, especially in Los Angeles. Oh, oh yeah. 
Los Angeles is, is a tough ticket to get people to come in anyway. And if you're not winning, yep. you're a nobody. Forget it. I'm, I don't believe in myself as being a nobody. I, I, right. I either I either going to stand up or I'm going to stand up or I'm going to get off. I'm either stand up or I'm going to get off because and, – and my players have to believe in that as well. So we're going to come into this season full blast and – and whatever happens, whatever happens after that happens. But we're, we're going to give it a maxed out effort week in and week out and let the chips fall where they may. Coach, let me ask you a question. Um, what kind of offense do you guys plan to run as a person who's never seen the Wildcats yet? So uh, what type of offense and what kind of defense are you planning to put out there? Spy, spy. We got a spy question here. Everybody, <laughs> everybody asking me what the hell kind of offense and defense is running. Four, get three, this three, man. four. What, get what this. are we doing? Hey, security. <laughs> security. Dan got security because we're – I'm going to put this to you this way because we obviously can't right, talk right, right. about what we're going to be doing starting February 8th. But offensively, winning. defensively, and special teams, we're going to put an offense out there that's going to match up our strengths versus Houston weaknesses. Same thing on defense, same thing on special teams. So you might see anything. Okay. Hey. You might see I like that. anything. Okay. I, like that's just I look like forward it, to it. You know, I offense like is going to be exciting. Defense is going to be smash mouth. That's all you, you know, that's all you got to say. Just, no, no, offense is going to be smash mouth. No, you can say that, but, you know. I've said it already on the damn yes, stage sir, like yeah. a hundred times. So that's right. Um, so it's all, it's the, the new rules, Coach Moss. The new rules uh, for the league. What do you? What rule? What rule or rules excite you the most? Maybe from an offensive perspective and a defensive perspective. And a football team. player. None of them excite me because <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna line up and play ball, and our, our our objective is to outscore. The other team, no right. matter what. Our, so offensively, we're going to outscore and outmatch their defense. Defensively, we're going to try and outmatch their offense. And the same thing on the special teams. And so when you talk about the new rules, we play within those rules. But everybody's talking about these new rules. But guess what? It's still football, yeah, baby. Yeah, if, at the end of the day, well, it's at the end of the day, one man has got to beat the other man. Offense has got to block and catch and run. Defense has to get off blocks, tackle, get the ball back and cover guys up. Special teams has to do their job. They got to be well fitted and they got to give us field position. At the end of the day, it's still the same football game outside of the Kickoff, kickoff return rules outside of the 25 second clock, outside of the point after touchdown tries, outside of the new overtime rules. We can talk about that all day, yep. but at the end of the day, it's all still football. We still got to go out and take care of our, our business. We right. got to make sure that the Wildcats are doing the things that, that we can do to put ourselves in position to win. We're not going to worry about our opponents and the rules. The rules will take care of themselves if we take care of ourselves. And if we take care of ourselves, we're going to take care of our opponents. Bam. It's Mike beautiful. Drop. Mike <laughs> drop. It's beautiful. I think, I think that's how we Yo, can end it. He me pumped so, up, man. <laughs> no, Coach Moss, we really appreciate you being on the show. We'd love to have you anytime. Obviously, we do our podcast. No, no, back. no, no, because <laughs> I've asked for you guys to be on your show like, like 100 times. I've all been denied. You guys, we would never you deny guys, you got you guys, and I want to talk to me. You, you guys said I'm not big enough. I'm, I'm not. I'm not a name. I'm a nobody. You said I'm a nobody, and so so I got beef with all you guys from LA and all you guys. I I'm just telling you, and so now now all of a sudden. You see the the energy, and you see all this, and all of a sudden, everybody wants to talk now. <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah, so Get no, out of here. The, the season starts in a couple of weeks. I'm really excited to see your coach, your style. Thank you, coach. Thank you so much for being on the show, Thank Coach. You, sir. You're coach. definitely invited back. We'll have to any time, any time. Any time. We're open invitation right now so we don't get it twisted. We all get it confused. And, and, and so with that being said, um, 2 o'clock in the morning, 
<laughs> Five o'clock in the morning. What y'all got? What y'all got for me? Yeah. yeah. Can y'all, <laughs> can y'all, you can y'all work with that? Uh, uh, I don't think we, we can. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> no. Oh, now I gotta work with y'all around y'all uh, schedule. Kind of... Well, my schedule is a little bit different. Why don't, why don't y'all come to my schedule? Come on down. There. Invite come us on. up. We'll be there. <laughs> How are we feeling at two a.m. though? What, what kind of mood are we? <laughs> I, I mean, I might not run or anything, but we'll come out and we'll talk. We'll, we'll be leaving the bar and then we'll call you up. Yeah, yeah we'll bug you. <laughs> hey. I might be leaving the same bar with you. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> I like that energy. <laughs> 5 a.m., I don't know, but 2 a.m., got it. <laughs> no, nah, man. Hey, no, nah, serious talk. Whenever. Yeah. Okay. Pick up the, pick up the damn phone. Win, Give me a shout. Win, win. I'm, I'm, I'm always available. Thank coach. you, Coach. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm always available. All right, so right after this, we're going to have another show. Yeah. <laughs> I'm available even when I'm not. Okay. He's a man of the people, always available for the people. You got me? All coach right. Moss, good thank deal. Thank you so much. Thank you so good much. Day, have a great day. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Over. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the coach of your L.A. Wildcats right there. With the mic drop as well. Plenty of mic drops. He dropped the mic twice during yeah, that got, interview. He got me pumped up, dude. I <laughs> know. Uh, uh, he said any time. I'm ready to play, dude. I'm ready to run through a wall. Can you guys guy. hear me in the headphones? I can hear you. Yes. He said any time. Any time. I don't know. I don't know. If, I was just making sure that I heard him right. That's why I asked. And I, he said I, like I 3 a.m. I much. don't do that. He said yeah. 3 or 5. I don't sleep very much. And that was the interview with Coach Moss. Yeah, we want to thank Coach Moss for coming on. Obviously, he was a great interview. So He's uh, a bucket of energy, dude. His beard is majestic up close. Yeah. It's got like perfect balance of salt and pepper. <laughs> it's funny because Alex and I were talking <laughs> to the front office afterwards, and they're like, you got Coach Moss. <laughs> Everybody was like shocked. You big big like, up to Mo because Mo was the one right. that. Oh, I, I was just stalking him. I'm like, Mo on, knows how to stalk. On. I was doing oh. it for the fans. Give me I'm some like, Mo. They want, they want you, Coach. So he came by. He was gracious. But, you know, he's a very guarded man. He really wouldn't answer my questions about the offense or the defense. He <laughs> called me a spy, man. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. He even said, security. <laughs> he was yelling. <laughs> like, I was trying to get the dirt, but they wouldn't yeah, give it to man. me. man. He's like, we're going to run a pop. You know what? He's a spy. <laughs> <laughs> so let me say this. Uh, let me ask you this, this question. After uh, talking to Coach Moss and just being at the event, do you feel more excited now than you did before the event for the season, up, for the so, upcoming season? So everybody kept saying that he's a, a player's coach and yeah, that these yeah. players would run, th run through a wall. Yeah. In the uh, three, four minutes we talked to him, I wanted to run through a wall to that guy, man. He, like, pumped me up. Put me in, Coach. I got yeah. hoop dreams. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> So to answer your question, I would say, yes, I'm more excited now than I was before this event. I would say getting to know and getting to meet some of the players, you know, that they'll, that, that we'll play the interviews for later, but, and coach Moss I, and, and the president Heather, I just felt like everybody's, it's not fake. Like everybody really feels that way. They all have a lot of energy. They all feel optimistic about the season. They all feel like this can be a special group. Yeah. So I think before that, obviously, you're thinking that in your mind, but you don't know exactly what it looks like, what it sounds like. It actually like. feels like the product is going to be good. I, I felt like we were at the start of something. Like, for example, I love the NFL, and I love watching NFL films, and they always go back and talk about the beginning. Right. It's all majestic. I'm like, we were actually there at the start or the restart mm -hmm. of the XFL, and I think this time it actually might work out. So I'm hoping it'd be like 20 years from now. I was there that day. That'd be yeah. great. That'd be awesome. I'm going to still look the same age, though. <laughs> Season tickets yeah. were $100. <laughs> I know. Right? I know. <laughs> <laughs> look, I get a ticket for nothing. <laughs> we used to get tickets for $20. And now I, parking was $20. Yeah. Yeah. Parking was $20. You, you know, it's funny. I actually had a couple people hit me up on Twitter today talking about how they prefer LA Extreme over LA Wildcats. Fuck them. Uh, the name. Fuck you. The name. Yeah, no, no the name was... I. I wanted the extreme, and it took it took the Wildcats a, a few like a little while to grow on me. At first, one no, I was, the but, Wildcats uh, helmet is way better than the extreme helmet. Yes, it is. I don't even know what the, what the, the, the extreme the extreme logo is very like that for that time. Yeah, very Microsoft Paint. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or not. <laughs> <laughs> and did you guys see that they had the championship? They did yeah, have the championship. They had, they had dropped. Dude, they Good literally drop, that was in a, in a closet. They yeah. like got it out of a closet. Yeah, <laughs> it was in a closet. Yeah, it was broken. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yep. That was the actual trophy too of the f only yeah. XFL no, million season. Million dollar game, the million dollar game. Like what that. is their Super Bowl called this time? Is it called uh, the million dollar game again? No, no, no they haven't announced it's it yet. Just championship game. They haven't announced it yet. Okay, 
Like I said, uh, Oliver Luck is the commission. He's running this whole show. That's a good question. Yeah. We should ask them. We should ask Heather. We should. They don't even know where they're going to have it at. I know, but we yeah. should ask Heather what are the talkings about? What, what's the name? Should we come up with some names? She'd be like, it's a badass name. <laughs> okay. <yeah. laughs> That's right. <laughs> we don't know. We just want it to be something badass. See, Super Bowl just rings right. And Million Dollar Cup or Million Dollar Game didn't roll off the Super tongue. Super Bowl, X Bowl. So how about the Super Duper Bowl? And oh. Oh, yeah. You got oh. to step it up. For sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> what was that, 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 the, the cup for, uh, from uh, uh, um, a semi-pro? Uh, Jackie Moon? What was it? The... No, they just had to get to 16th place. <laughs> no, he had. The, remember when he did do it? He had the Mega Bowl, the the Flint, Michigan Mega Bowl. We should call it the Los Angeles Mega Bowl. Yeah, the, oh, the, Mega the Bowl. Extreme, extreme, right? Yeah, Mega yeah. Bowl. And the extreme where the only team to win. Yes. The extreme bowl. Hey, hey look at it. That's not actually not a bad idea. The Bills. That's actually not a bad idea. Shout out to Mario or, for that. Or, or that how nugget. about the extreme Mega Bowl? <laughs> Damn. Damn, he tried to one up you. <laughs> you know what? Damn. That's better. I'm trying to put two things together, man. The Extreme Bowl, I like that. And then they have to obviously get it sponsored, right? The Extreme Bowl sponsored by Under Armour. No, by, hey, White, by White Claw. No, by Shake Extreme, <laughs> right? The Five Blades. Oh. oh. Five Blades better than four. No. Mega Extreme Bowl better than Extreme Bowl. No, they oh. should be sponsored by Bud Light and their new. Uh, Seltzers? No, <laughs> no, never, never that. That sounds gross, right? <laughs> Just but, but Wildcats definitely has to have White Claw as one of its sponsors, yes. right? Yeah, she White said Claw, Claws up. Claws up. Claws Claws up. up. She made it sound dope. <laughs> I was like, I say Claws up. I like, know. Yeah. Like Claws up. What's the... Like you get... If you say Claws up, I feel like punching you. Yeah, wow. When she said it, I felt like hugging her. <laughs> really? Not scared by her? No. Why would I be scared by I her? Like, I feel like she can kick our ass, dude. Yeah, probably, but probably. that doesn't make me scared. Yeah. That makes me intrigued. Uh, if uh, she yeah. kicks our ass, we'll wake up. <laughs> I'm afraid of her. She might be gone. She, there's there's no exactly. CTE there. You know? <laughs> well, speaking, speaking of somebody who, who can before, speaking of somebody who can kick our ass, uh, we we interviewed Sean Oakman. Oh and, man, uh, yeah. yeah. Let's uh, let's play that for our listeners now. Big dude. All right, you. welcome back oh, to. Uh, are, are we recording? Yes, yes we are recording. Course. Welcome back to Wild Talk. We just got off with Coach Moss. A little bit ago and President Heather, we have Meatball on the show, we have Big Wood on the show, and now we have the giant up on stage, Mr. Sean Oakman. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? <laughs> we're doing great. Hey, we're now, do you have a nickname that you want to let the people know about? Uh, or one I that don't. maybe you don't want to let the people know about? <laughs> I'm whoever you want me to be. Hey. <laughs> well, well, Coach, um, Coach Moss said he wants some, uh, some dogs out there. So you, we need you to be that dog I'm, out there. I'm definitely a dog. Okay. That's definitely? Sure. That's definitely. So, you, so what I, type of what type of style do you bring to the defense? Obviously, you're a big dude. Is that what you hang your hat on? Is your physicality? Yeah, I'm a dog. I'm a dog. Any attribute that you see about a big dog, yeah, I'm that type of dog. Okay. You know, nice. I growl, I bark, I drool. You know, I'm all that. Nice. Yeah, he look like he's gonna fuck somebody up right now. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus hey, why Christ. you got him cussed again, man? I, dude, he's intimidating, hey, he's so man. He's head. intimidating. <laughs> so we, one of the things we saw on stage today, and I think the people didn't know about before, was Coach Moss's energy, uh -huh. right? And not just his energy, the players' energy. What's it like to be in that environment, and what's does that motivate you as a player? Definitely, you know, when you got a leader that's uh, leading the leading the raid, full steam ahead, you know, with his hair on fire. You got no choice to but to follow a man like that, you know. Hopefully he'll lead you into the dungeon, and hopefully he'll lead you out. So I, I want to say one thing. So first and foremost, we started this podcast in the supporter group in uh, Section 122 because we're big fans. Uh, we're all behind the Wildcats. And you were one of our favorite players on the jump. We talked about you in the podcast uh, many episodes. And then uh, when you got released, uh, we were a little sad. We, we were you were a little sad. We did almost no, the whole show yeah, about it. Yeah, we did almost the whole. So it's a <laughs> blessing to have you back. We're so excited to have you back. Yes, sir, I yes, think sir. you're going to be one of the, the, the big stories on the defense. And I think we have a, we have in a the good league. shot. In the whole league, yeah. Yeah. we're expecting big things. And uh, we, have a, we think you have a good shot go all the way. How do you, how do you see us? Oh, it's this definitely season? a blessing. It's definitely a blessing, man. Uh, going through what I had to go through to get released and then come back. So. You know, it's meant to be. You know, so I feel that way. I feel bad for whoever we got to play. Yeah, that's a that's a threat to all the, those tackles out there, man. Those offensive tackles. <laughs> Look, and, and I'm telling you, any people listening right now, for all our fans listening, 
just just zoom in on his eyes when he says that, and you'll believe it. You'll feel it. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> He's gonna For be sure. killing people out there. So uh, you you have a good secondary behind you from the sounds of it. How much confidence does that give give you to basically get after the quarterback, try to tear it up on the line? Yeah, I got confidence in our whole team. You know, I believe everybody could do their job, and as long as everybody do their job to the best of their the best of their ability, yeah, we're gonna be champions in April. Hey, yeah. I like that. And LA likes their champions too. Ooh. Can't help it. How do you like the city? Oh, I love it. I can't wait to go see LeBron play. <laughs> yeah, hey, oh, you're a Lakers oh, fan. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a greatness fan. Yeah, I'm cool. a fan of greatness. <laughs> okay. You know, so yeah. wherever greatness is, I want to be there. Yeah. You're here with the Wildcats, so you, you already. Know? You We're gonna start, start greatness for yeah. sure. I respect yeah, that. Yeah. That's gonna be a good game next Tuesday too. Lakers Clippers. Ooh, I might have to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to get in there for sure. Gotta get you the Lakers. game. Gotta get you Dodger Stadium. Hey, if you wanna come to a Galaxy game, man? Hey, definitely. Well, most of you. And we they got, got Chicharito, so yeah, that's we got, a, another we got, greatness. Hey. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of greatness at Dignity. Yeah. I just thought about that. Yeah. Hey. We have the we're, we host for the Galaxy. We host the best game in MLS history every oh. year. Okay. It's LAFC versus LA Galaxy. I'm in there. It's the Cross Town Rivalry. I'm there. Yeah, dude. I'm it's there. a lot of energy, dude. I'm celebrities there. come. It's been yeah. like celebrities have been coming for the last year to it. The first year, there was a lot of celebrities, but the second year, even more. Okay. And every game is hype. Best game in MLS, best broadcast in MLS yeah. history. Let's go. David Beckham. Shout out to David Beckham. Appreciate yeah. you. Statue watching us outside. <laughs> you know? and, uh, um, yeah, man. We, we're, trying to, we're trying to bring that energy that the, the Galaxy has, the fans of soccer, into football with that stadium. That's why we want to be in Section 122, cheering you guys on with drums, partying, just making noise the whole time. We want to give you guys the energy, and we want to, we want to be loud. We want to give a different feel than the NFL. Yes, sir. So Non-stop how, action. Does that, so how much of a motivation factor is that for our fans listening to hey. get hyped, to be here early? Try to turn you up. Listen to this. If you want to see some hard hitting, non flag, <laughs> <laughs> when you sack the quarterback football, you know, it, it's football. We're getting back to football. We're getting back to the basics. We're going back to the 90s. We're going back to the 80s, and we're playing football. To the game people so love. The yeah. game people love. The yeah. game people grew up with watching, you know, getting just used to that again. So if you love that, you love violence and you love the game of football, how it's really supposed to be played, right. come check out the Wildcats. Damn, I don't think, think we can say it any better than that. That was, that was a mic drop right that. there. That was a mic drop. <laughs> Start every show with that. You did? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you have a social media you want to? I do. Y'all can follow me at I am Oakman. All platforms, I am Oakman. You know, the one and only. So. Oh, man. Great. Well, thanks for being on the show, man. Nah, we really man, no appreciate it. Hey, we'll appreciate be here so much. 122, you'll see us too. Hey, too easy. We'll be gotcha. there. <laughs> we'll be there. Right, Yo, thank, thank you so you much. much. Right, look forward to seeing you play. Oh, yeah, man, I'm for excited. Sure. <laughs> I'm excited. Some of the people we met today, oh, my God. Right? I know, right? I feel like I feel like Sean is legit. <laughs> going to knock somebody out cold. Dude, out he is. Look at his big dude, man. I like this, but not just that. It's the positivity that they've all talked with. It's the it's the optimism about you know how we're gonna play a certain way. We're gonna play hard, and uh, yeah, that's what I'm most. It's it's, about. it's crazy because they have like a little bit of humor, but then they like can turn on the the like just focused right seriousness. You know well, what I mean? We appreciate everybody who came on our podcast today. Obviously, um, we're gonna have more of a show later, but we yep. just wanna we're we're gonna wrap it up here. I think from. Uh, Dignity Health Sports. It got Park. cold as shit. That's why. Yeah, it got really cold. But Mo, Mo, thanks for being on the, being on the chat. Today. Mo I actually has snow gloves on, dude. Yeah, he, he thinks he's in the Northeast or something. <laughs> he's got those snow gloves on. But Mo, is there any last words you want to say about today? It's a good day. It was a good day today because we finally got to meet the Wildcats. They're big, dude. Those oh are man, big. Those are fucking huge dudes, man. Stop. Don't, uh, don't oh, be hating on my gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's hand. I actually my think it's a good idea. Cold, I'm man. freezing, dude. My I'm, hands I'm still got cold. My fingers underneath my knee pits. Hey, <laughs> and you got those big man hands too, bro. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> All right, Rico. Well, any any last thoughts about today? Today, I, I was shocked with the turnout. It's a great turnout. Super good turnout. Uh, I actually like how all the fans are already wearing the gear. Yeah, yeah. So they're they're pumped up. Oh, some of the gear today is nice too. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. Those those hats that uh, the, the Dallas Cowboys Booster Club guys had were nice. And um, on top of that, man, it's just good to see the players, like, put yeah. it, you know, face of the player, personalities and everything. And um, I'm, I'm stoked, dude. Well, I want to thank all our guests for being on the show today. I want to thank Mo and Rico, obviously, and myself. I want to thank myself for being myself. You would thank yourself. Uh, this, that's such a Gabriel thing to do. Thank yourself. Our crew here today, videotaping a lot. Hopefully you follow all our content. 
at LA underscore Wild Talk. Wild wow. Talk underscore LA. My bad. Wild Talk underscore LA. And uh, yeah, let's go catch. What did, what did Heather say? Claws up? Claws up. Hey, it doesn't sound that bad when she says it. When I say it, I just don't. Feel I, right. You don't, you don't you're not, yeah, up. exactly. You said well, badass, right? This, she's badass. She's badass. That's how we're going to end it today. <laughs> Claws up, folks. Claws up. up. Everyone, thank you. And that was her interview with Sean Oakman. Uh, what do you guys think about uh, the Oaks or the Oaks? Can we can we be honest? Were we intimidated when we were interviewing him? Yes, I was very yes. much intimidated. Well, I wasn't until his his first sentence was very intimidating. Yeah, and it, and he was like he didn't want to be there, and then he was like, "I'm gonna kill you," and then he was like <laughs> enthusiastic. It was there was a lot of emotions. There's a lot going through there. I was like, "How happy can we be with him?" Oh, we I, have to match his energy. Oh, I didn't say he he, <laughs> he didn't want to be there like he didn't want to be in, on the podcast, not the block party. He seemed very happy at the block party. Oh, yeah, man. All his friends were there. But uh, he was like, you guys are taking me with my friends. And then he was like, oh, cool. This is cool. But no, I, I enjoyed the interview. I, I'm looking forward to him being on the defense. I think he's an NFL level talent. Yeah. <laughs> what are you laughing about? Oh my God! They, they put Kyle Kuzma in a dress, and what's her name's dress? That girl he's dating, and they said Kyle Kuzma with the monster performance, four Yo, points in twenty six. I don't want to get into like Lakers again, but Kyle yeah. Kuzma is literally banging. He's the, the truth, girl in, and he has a shitty haircut. Yes, the, the, dude, I told you last week. All yeah. the all the little girlies yeah, are all about get it. Kyle Kuzma. We're talking about Sean Oakman. Best thing that can happen is they trade him because Sean Oakman only respects greatness, huh. as he and, said. And he'll in the yeah. fuck up Kyle Kuzma. He will. Yeah. He'll eat him. It, probably he'll probably eat him he'll probably look at him so hard kyle kuzma's hair will just automatically go back to his natural that's a, color that's a big dude imagine him in the fucking uniform too with the shoulder pads and it, the, the beginning of his interview when he's like i'm a dog i drool i bark i do whatever the the, the coach wants me to do i was like damn bro you like and you, you're talking like through my heart stopped i feel like we all started <laughs> close to him and then we ended up like three <laughs> feet away <laughs> that's a scary dude i'm glad i don't have to run towards him I'm glad I wore two layers of deodorant. And it's going to work out. He's going to work with the Wildcats. Well, degree and secret? Yeah. Degree and secret. Secret degree? I put on the, the white, and then I spray it with the sealer. Ah, nice. <laughs> nice, nice. No, but uh, I like, thought he, I think, like you were saying, he at the beginning of the interview, he was just trying to like fill it out. And then there was a middle point of the interview. I felt like he opened up a little bit more, and he's like, okay, like I feel okay to talk now. Um but he's, he was really cool. Actually, for almost all of our interviews today, including him, like we had to tell them like, OK, interviews over. Like they were cool just sitting there. You know what I mean? And, and talking, talking shop because they want to be one of us. Yep. Like, I don't want to be no professional football player. I want to do a podcast. Huh. Yes, sir. We have some cool ass stickers. These cool ass shirts. Yeah. So it's the cool. life, baby. That so banner, thanks to Mo. We've, uh, <laughs> we've dubbed Sean Oakman the, the Undertaker. Hit, oh, yeah. Thanks to Mo. We should have a bell. Thank you. Creative. He had that big director. Undertaker hat. You, and he just looked like a professional wrestler. Like, like if you saw Undertaker match and then he tagged Oakman in, you, would, would you really be shocked? Yo, what that? if you, um, qu qu serious question. What if he slapped your girlfriend's ass in front of you? Come on, You man. know, if he slapped yeah. my girl's ass, I'm a man before anything. And I mean, I'd be like, look, man, if you go slap my girl's ass like that, you know, you, you might as well take her out because I am not going to fight you. <laughs> All right. No, no, no. I mean, I, I would, I would try. I mean, I would try to I like, would have been like, Hey, Hey man. No. All and then walk away. No, all jokes like, aside. Because, <laughs> hey, hey, you, 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 the man, you, the man. Uh, hey man, that's, that's not nice as I'm walking away from my girl. <laughs> That's not nice. That's not cordial. No, no. I, I, Yo, I would just stand up to him and hope that nothing happened. And, I but, know, something would happen. But, if, I mean, if he wanted to get down, I mean, like I said before, I've been knocked out before. I woke up I don't eventually. Think <laughs> not by someone that big. I don't think you would have woken because, up. Because I can't walk around. Here lies the body of Mo. <laughs> yeah, but it, it'll be sad when I get home and my wife is looking at me like, hey, you just let that happen? I, no, she would, would be like never Maurice. It, I would, <laughs> exactly. <say> whole name. <laughs> I would never live it down. So I would have to take that ass. Well, what would happen was you wake saying. up. You just go, hey, hey, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I would try to do everything except fight. I would yeah. walk up to that border. But if he wanted to get down, I would. You, that's why you you wake up. It would be worse when you wake up and you're like, where's my wife? And, yeah. then, and then someone's like, oh, she left with that dude that knocked you out. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 
At least I tried. And you'd be like, yeah. okay, good, yeah. I, good. I just want to know she was okay. Security exactly. escorted them. <laughs> long, long as she's safe. Now, you know? They left in that limo that you can't afford. <laughs> <laughs> You can't walk away in that yeah, Audi. You go home and he's in your house. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, man? You want a sandwich? <laughs> Yo, man, you look a little bit chat. You want some water? <laughs> Sorry about knocking you out, but hey, your bathtub's comfortable though. We both fit. I didn't know that. <laughs> Did you know that? Sorry, sorry, my face hurt your knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> like kids run out. Hey, dad. You're like, hi. He's like, not you, him. <laughs> the big it's guy. A it's a good kids. <laughs> Damn. Dude, it's taking over my life yeah. now. <laughs> was he mad, man? Anyways, getting back to it, Sean Oakman seems like he was excited for the season. As excited as we were, I think a lot of these players are just like, bro, I just want to play. Like, I can't wait to play. Dude, they, they just got back from camp, so they're just chomping they're in the hit. Yeah. They're, they're happy to be the hell out of Houston. Yeah. I know, yeah. And back in L.A. They actually yeah. played Houston. They did a, they did a couple. practice scrimmage, with a, a, a joint practice, yeah. and they played the preseason. Huh? Yeah. Ma said that they um, played a couple. They saw a couple teams. It's gonna be interesting. Uh, on Monday, uh, they have to trim the rosters down, so we're gonna have cuts. We are um, gonna have cuts. Hopefully, nobody that we interviewed today. Nah, 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 nah I don't think nah, so. We got some. Uh, yeah, we yeah. we got top yeah, talent, we bro. Top we we yeah. wild talk, bro. <laughs> Maybe yeah. we're gonna get the best yeah. of the best. Hopefully, they don't cut Coach so. Moss. <laughs> <laughs> so next week we'll, we'll talk about some roster moves and then we have some more interviews next week for you who, who else do we got Haley Haley uh, so, uh, social media I mean from the team oh players in, in, in front office wise well she's Haley. front office I guess yeah, yeah she's front office man yeah. Haley. she was the fifth employee yeah. of Heather yeah. Wild, uh, yeah Wildcats yeah yeah we got the, the president of the team el presidente what did you call her la jefa la jefa what did you call it? Boss lady. Boss lady. Boss lady, boss lady Heather. AKA then, uh, boss lady. And then we got, uh, who else we got? Jordan uh, Smallwood. Jordan Smallwood. And Big we wood. got Maurice uh, Meatball. Yep. Carter. We got Martez Mar- Carter. 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 Oh my God. I got to work Martez on my name. Martez Carter. Dude. Mr. Excitement, as he called himself. Yeah, Mr. Excitement. <laughs> why, why do we, why does he call himself Meatball? What's that come from? It, I don't know. it was, he said the, the strength and conditioning coach? Yes. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> And then it's they, on the interview. <laughs> yeah, you can hear that next week. And then he said it's like chasing a meatball on your plate. Like you, you got you better you gotta stab that quick, otherwise it just keeps going away from you. He's a big dude too. Even though he's like not very meatball? tall. Meatball? Yeah. He's like a like a what, boulder. What's the name yeah. of the song? He just looked like a rock. <laughs> Which one? The meatball song. Like I don't know. It rolls on no. the plate. Make sure you follow them on their know. social medias too. Yeah. Make sure you follow Sean, them. Sean Oakman's was I am Oakman. And then uh, Martez Meatballs Carter's uh, I'm just underscore Tez. I'm just Tez. And yeah. I, I didn't get a big wood, but I'm gonna find it right now. What's it, what are your guys' social medias? Uh, Chris Ricola. Ale, 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 ale. <laughs> Eric Chris Ricola. <laughs> he really doesn't like that. And uh, you, Gabe? Mine is uh, at Gabe underscore Montoya13. Hey, we still have giveaways too, right? Oh yeah, yeah, we have giveaways. Oh, we better get on that right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What can we? What, what can we do? What, what? What do the? What do the listeners have to do to get two free tickets to the home opener? Uh, where does Gabriel intern? Like, where's his internship? With what school? What university? Oh yeah. Oh, that's a good one. That's a, that's good, a good, one. good one. If you tweet us with what school he interns with, interns is it interns? Yeah, it's his internship. At what school? Yeah, at what site? Yeah, what school site? At what school site? For our listeners, if you can figure out what school site, tweet us, and you will win two free tickets to the home I'm opener. I'm going to give uh, a hint. Ole! <laughs> they, they would understand that. Because it's the... I'm going to give another hint. I, I, I know a lot of them. I know a lot of them. I'm going to give a hint, too. Uh, my favorite place to eat there is Freebirds. You... Oh, my God. <laughs> He doesn't know anything about the school. <laughs> I do. I know what their their mascot is. Yeah, so don't yeah, say it. Yeah, and that's that's yeah, the their way. that's their saying. Okay, the we'll way. just go. With, we'll just go with that. So, uh, <laughs> Mo, you don't have a social you don't have a social media presence, do you? No, I do we not. talked about that. Yeah, it's kind of like a, we have another friend without a social media presence as well. <laughs> you don't have one or what? Okay, no, Jordan no, no, no. Smallwoods, I got it. J Smalls underscore seventeen. And uh, you can find me on uh, Instagram uh, at. Be, uh, uh, you can find me on Instagram, Alex Calderon Photo. 
or uh, Beelzebub's underscore LA. That's B E E L Z E B U B S underscore LA. Also on Twitter. Um, oh, also and check follow. out the your YouTube channel for First to Five. Yeah, check out First to Five. If you're a soccer fan, uh, Galaxy fan, check out uh, First to Five on Instagram and on a uh, on a uh, Twitter. Also follow Wild Talk at Wild Talk underscore LA. Instagram, Twitter, um, Tinder. Uh, what else are we on? <laughs> LinkedIn. <laughs> LinkedIn. LinkedIn. We're going to do a little stupid ass memes that are coming out right now. <laughs> What's. <laughs> oh. Damn. But yeah, next week we're uh, still action packed with more interviews from. Uh, from uh, and next week is Super Bowl, too. Yeah. Yeah, next thanks, Mario. Bowl. Thank you, Mario. Enjoy. Thank you, enjoy. Thank you for being um, in the studio. We can, you guys had some really good ideas. And we're gonna be dropping some bonus, some bonus content of all the interviews we got today at the block party, the Extreme uh, Bowl, the Extreme Bowl. Uh, yeah, and uh, check us out. I'll be dropping videos as well. Oh, also uh, hit us up for tickets if you guys want to sit next to us, Section One Twenty Two. Section One Twenty Two. One Two Two. Section. Hit one Deuce Deuce. Uh, hit our boy Kenny up. We'll give you the information. Uh, I'll tweet it today. Yo, actually, how many tickets? Can we? Are you can we steal? Game? What's up? How many tickets are you giving away for the, for the home opener? For no, for the uh, contest. Uh, we're giving away two free tickets Dude. to the home opener. Actually, you know what? They had a one of the names that Coach Moss gave the, the secondary was Black Ops. Yes. We should be call ourselves the Black Ops. Ooh. Section one twenty two. Black Ops. I like that. Mm. That's destruction. We gotta pick a name. I like the Den it. of Destruction. That's D O D. I go with it. All right. D O D. And then right. you can rock your DOD bods, your Dodd bods. <laughs> Dodd Dod bods. All right, I gotta get out of here. All right, see you next week, everybody. <laughs> All right, we're out of here. Bye.